In short, principal quantum shells contain subshells, which contain orbitals, which contain electrons. This is how a typical sodium atom looks like, and unfortunately, this diagram can only show you the principal quantum shells and electrons, but cannot show you the subshells and orbitals. To visualize this, you can either imagine each principal quantum shell as donuts, from small to big, and when we look at the cross section of a donut, we can see that the principal quantum shell houses the subshell, which houses the orbitals, which houses the electrons. Or, you can imagine it to be like this where this is the principal quantum shell, and within it are containers which are called subshells, and within these containers, there will be different types of orbitals which contains electrons. Firstly, we have the principal quantum shell. The number of principal quantum shell depends on which period an element is in. So if it's in period 1, it will have one shell, and we label it to be n equals to 1. And if it's in period 2, it will have two shells, and we label it to be n equals to 2, and so on. The further the principal quantum shell from the nucleus, the higher the energy level of that shell. The first principal quantum shell will contain one subshell. The second one will contain two subshells, and the third one will contain three subshells, and so on. And as the name suggests, subshells are shells within a shell, or we can see them as containers that contain orbitals. There are four types of subshells, the S, P, D, and F subshells. The S subshell can contain up to only one orbital, P can contain 3 orbitals, D can contain 5 orbitals, and the F subshell can contain up to 7 orbitals. So you can literally imagine them as containers of different sizes. And the SPDF orbitals are found in consecutive order within the principal quantum shells. Meaning, the first principal quantum shell will have the S subshell, which can also be named as the 1S subshell. In the second principal quantum shell, there will be the 2S and 2P subshells, and likewise for the third one, there will be the 3s, 3p, and 3d subshells. So it is like a successive build-up, s, sp, and spd. Within each of these spaces here lies an orbital. An orbital is basically a region of space that can contain up to a maximum of two electrons. There are four different types of orbitals, the s, p, d, and f orbitals, but for our syllabus, we will just focus on the s, p, and d orbitals. The S orbitals in S subshells are spherical in shape, and if they are in a larger principal quantum shell, their size will be larger. And because of their spherical shape, they are considered non-directional as the electron density is not concentrated at any particular direction. This is the opposite of the P orbitals present in P subshells, which are directional because they are dumbbell in shape. Hence, the electron density is concentrated in certain directions along the X, Y, and Z axis. If the lobes lie on the x-axis, it's called a px orbital. And if it lies on a y-axis, it's called a py orbital. And if it's on a z-axis, it's called a pz orbital. Likewise, p orbitals in a larger principal quantum shell will be larger in size. Lastly, there are 5d orbitals in d subshells. The first three d orbitals have a four-lobe shape, like a four-leaf clover, and their lobes point in between the axes. So if the lobe is in between the x and y axis, its name will be dxy, and if the lobe is in between the x and z axis, its name will be dxz. And lastly, if the lobe is in between the y and z axis, its name is dyz. The next d orbital looks pretty similar to the previous three orbitals, as it also has this four-leaf clover-like shape. But can you spot the difference? The difference is that instead of the lobes being in between the x, y, and z axis, the lobes are along the x and y axis like a sausage on a stick. Hence, the name dx square minus y square. The last d orbital is more unique. It consists of a dumbbell surrounded by a small donut-shaped ring at its waist, and the dumbbell lobe is aligned along the z-axis. Hence its name dz square. So at a glance, these are how the orbitals will look like, and how they are related to the subshells and principal quantum shells. Now remember I said that each of these orbitals can contain up to a maximum of 2 electrons? So for the first principal quantum shell, the maximum number of electrons is only 2. Whereas for the second quantum shell, the maximum is 2 plus 6 which is 8. And for the third one, it is 2 plus 6 plus 10 which will give you 18. So, do orbitals contain subshells? The answer is no, and it is the other way around where subshells contain orbitals instead. For the second question, the second principal quantum shell will have 1 plus 3 which is 4 orbitals. 
And lastly, yes, the third principal quantum shell has only three subshells.